Shabbat Shalom. So, finding a life partner is not an easy thing to do. Yet for most of us, it's something that we are eager to attain. Having a life partner means sharing the joys and thrills of accomplishments, adventures, milestones with someone that you really understand and someone who really understands you. It means someone with whom you can share the pain of loss, embarrassment, even despair. Someone who can remind you of your better self. Someone who can cheer you up when you're down. One person whom you love in a very precious and a very special way. Someone that grows and develops and matures over the years, just as you grow and develop and mature over the years yourself. As I said, most of us are eager to have such a relationship. I realize, of course, that not everyone is so motivated. For some people, a lifetime friendship provides that kind of support and comfort. Life is complicated. Everybody's different. I also realize that for many people who are searching for a life partner relationship, they nevertheless find it distressingly elusive. Looking back over the last 30 years of my life, I consider myself very lucky. But for the first 30 years of my life, am I that old? Well, let's just say I didn't feel so lucky. As a lawyer in Los Angeles, believe it or not, I found it difficult to find that right person. What was I looking for? Well, by then I was a pretty observant conservative Jew. That meant I kept a kosher kitchen, I didn't use electricity on Shabbat or drive on Shabbat, and of course I observed all the holidays. I went to shul every Saturday. You could say Judaism was pretty important in my life, and I wanted to share that with my partner. So you might say to me, yeah, but Rabbi, you were living in Los Angeles. It's a huge Jewish community. What's the problem? But I was not Orthodox, and I didn't want to be Orthodox, and I also didn't want to give up Shabbat and Kashrut, and that did limit, to some extent, the options. So one time I signed up for a computer dating service. Yeah, I know, that used to be a thing. That was before people had phones with apps and stuff like that you could do this on. Anyway, I signed up for this computer dating service, filled out this long questionnaire, and in exchange for the fee, I'm supposed to get five names with phone numbers for three months. And the first month, I got zero people. <laughs> so I called them up and I said, hey, I paid good money for this. And they said, well, let me take a look and see what it is. And sure enough, keeping Shabbat and kosher was an issue for them. Anyway, I did eventually get matched up with a couple of people, and I went on some blind dates, and if you've been on blind dates, you probably can guess what happened. So then I went to Israel. But before I tell you the rest of that story, I want to talk about what happened with our ancestor Abraham when he wanted to find a spouse for his son Isaac. So you probably have heard the story before he got his, his servant, his, whose name was Eliezer, to go up north to the family home up in Syria and find a wife for Isaac. And so Eliezer makes a deal with God. If I ask these women over at the well, they're getting water from the well, if I ask them to give me water and one of them says, yeah, I'll give you water and your 10 camels. Camels, remember, drink a lot of water. I'll water your 10 camels. The woman who says that, that's the one for Isaac. And of course, Rebecca does just that. So on the one hand, this could be what we say is beshert. It was just luck. It was, you know, he could have said, if she has a blue stone in her pocket, or she's wearing Calvin Klein's obsession cologne, then that's the one. But he said, no, I've got to water myself and these camels. And I think he was intentional with that. Because this character demonstrates extraordinary kindness to strangers. He's a stranger. They didn't know who he was. And it shows tremendous compassion for animals, 10 whole camels, and a determination in performing a very challenging task, drawing all that water. And I believe Eliezer was specifically looking for that character trait for Isaac because he believed that's what Isaac desperately needed. Remember that Isaac's mother, Sarah, had just died. His father, Abraham, had nearly sacrificed him to God for crying out loud. 
It's true, our tradition says that Isaac was 37 years old at the time, and Abraham was therefore 137 years old. So if Isaac didn't want to participate in that event, he could have said, mm, I'm out. But still, that must have been a life-shattering experience. Isaac never talks to his father after that, at least nothing recorded in the Bible. And so Isaac must be a very broken and a very depressed person, and what he needed was someone to love him, someone to nurture him, even to mother him. And that's why Eliezer wanted someone who would be persistent in showering kindness, compassion, and empathy. In other words, someone like Rebecca. That was what Eliezer was looking for in a partner for Isaac. So I went off to Israel. I packed up all my stuff for a year, and I went to study Jewish texts and traditions. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll find somebody in Israel. After all, I'm putting myself in a place where there's a lot of other Americans who speak English and are nevertheless really interested in Judaism. I loved learning that year, but I was not so successful in finding a partner until about halfway through the year. In the middle of that year, I went to a Shabbat dinner with services at someone's apartment. It was a bunch of students from HUC and JTS, and that's how I met Diane. This potluck dinner was organized every month by this group of students, but it was the only time that I went, and it was the only time that Diane went. So you could say it was kind of beshert, and the rest is history. So the moral of the story is this. When you're searching for a life partner, here are six really simple, maybe obvious things to do. First of all, know yourself. Know what is really most important to you. And also, know what you can compromise in your life. Second, put yourself in places where you're likely to meet the person you're looking for. Listen to your friends as well. As with finding a good job, your friends know you and they know a lot of other people that you don't know. So they may know someone who would be a good match for you. Of course, they could be wrong, but it's worth a try, right? Sometimes it's a matter, the third thing is sometimes it's a matter of luck, just being at the right time in the right place. It's beshert. Being at the right place at the right time in the right time in your life with someone who is also the right time in the right place for them, that's luck. But if that's luck, number four, never give up hope. You never know what tomorrow might bring. On the other hand, don't let life pass you by in the meantime. Every single day is precious. Make the most of it for you and your life each and every day. Number five, I always ask couples for whom I'm gonna do a wedding how they first met. And nearly every single time they tell me this story. Whatever it was they did, they got into a conversation, they lost complete track of time and everybody else in the room. Same story, same story that Diane and I had. What this tells us is that you have to be yourself. You don't want to pretend to be someone else when you're going out with somebody you're going to spend the rest of your life with, because then you have to pretend to be someone else the rest of your life. If you're being yourself and you're connecting to that other person who's also being genuine, that's what makes that magical moment of having such an easy conversation that can go on forever. And finally, be prepared to grow and change, hopefully together. Life really is a journey. It's not just a cliche. And like a journey is filled with hills and valleys, good times, challenging times, successes, even failures. Well, let's not call them failures. We'll call them learning experiences. We're all just doing the best we can. And if we're really lucky, we get to share some or even most of that journey with someone very special. Shabbat Shalom.